We should be live. Yes, we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Today, we're going to do the first day of Advent of Code. If you've never heard what about Advent of Code, it's a um, daily uh, challenge. Uh, it's, it's a challenge where daily puzzles are uh, released every day for 25 days until Christmas and you can um, solve them any uh, in any way you want uh, in any programming language you want some people don't use a programming language at all and find uh, inventive ways to solve it and uh, I'm going to solve them today in JavaScript uh, so if you're uh, learning JavaScript or if you uh, want to see how uh, generally puzzles are what's like a approach to solving puzzles uh, this might be interesting for you um, today's the first day of advent of code uh, 2020 I did uh, this is my first time I'm actually going through uh, advent of code I did 2019 last year uh, well I did it a few days ago just to prep for it. Uh, I did the first two days and it was uh, it was not too hard but the second part of day two, uh, day two got pretty challenging uh, and the idea is that the uh, as the advent of code event progresses the uh, puzzles become more and more difficult and uh, that especially with the last ones uh, the 23rd 4th and 25th are really challenging and uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go through all of them if I'm uh, gonna be able to solve all of them but we should be able to at least go through some and uh, otherwise I'm uh, always going to uh, yeah I'm going to ask in a chat for tips where it's we're in this together uh, if I'm stuck anywhere or if you just uh, find a nifty way of solving uh, of coming up with a solution let me know I'm, uh, I'm keeping an eye on the chat and uh, uh, let's keep this interactive. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, so let's start with the first day. I actually have an account already. I uh, connected with GitHub and uh, day one is already up. So every day is, uh, every, yeah, every, the puzzles for each day are released at, uh, at noon uh, Eastern Standard Time. So it's been live now for, I believe, four hours. Yeah, already, the first day. Um, so we're going to get into it. Uh, before we need this, we re read the story. Uh, let's first create a, um, um, a folder where we're gonna keep our solutions. So create a folder, we call it Advent of Code 2020. We're going to open VS Code in that folder, nope, not that one. And um, I'm going to make a repository for it on GitHub. Uh, that's going to be similar to this one already that I have. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. A new repository. We'll call this Advent of Code 2020. My solutions to the Advent of Code event. Let's put the year in there. Great. Public. Uh, let's add a README and a license, MIT. Good. That's about it. There we have it, and we're going to add this uh, repository as remote, get remote at origin there. So we should be able to pull. Uh, I think I need to use the force 
view no oh, unknown switch yeah I didn't need two dashes Mm. What was the set upstream? People. Oh wait, I forgot to say origin. Didn't I? Damn it! What's going wrong? Uh, I'll just um, I'll just clone it. Much easier. Yeah, there's the duck. City uh, code. If you're here watching, introduce yourself in the chat. Let me know how you found out about this stream and uh, what's going on, uh, what you're up to. Let's get to know each other a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm just going to clone the repository. Yes. And then we're going to open VS Code in it. Awesome. We're here. Let's open up the terminal here. So we have it, great, we can close this terminal. And there's some files in here that I want to copy, but I'll do that in a bit as we start solving it. Great, so first day, um, there's always like a backstory to the puzzles, which makes it very interesting. Uh, last year, there was uh, Santa was stuck somewhere in space and uh, you had to uh, find him and uh, you, ha you had to like, uh, find out the coordinates of several star systems uh, by solving puzzles and then you found Santa and you had to bring Santa back to Earth so he could deliver the presents. It was pretty, uh, pretty fun uh, story to, to read. So this year, um, let's go through it. Uh, report, repair. After saving Christmas five years in a row, I think that's uh, for how long Advent of Code has been running. Five years is the sixth year now. Um, you've decided to take a vacation at a nice resort on a tropical island. Sounds good. Surely Christmas will go on without you. The tropical island has its own currency and it's and is entirely cash only. The gold coins used there have a little picture of a starfish. Cute. The locals just call them stars. None of the currency exchanges. So stars is bold and like colored in a different color, which means that something we need to pay attention to. Um, so as we read through the story, uh, keep attention to like stuff, stuff that's highlighted and marked as bold. Um, so the currency is called uh, stars. Good. None of the currency exchanges seem to have heard of them, but somehow you'll need to find 50 of these coins by the time you arrive so you can pay the deposit on your room. That's important. To save your vacation, you need to get all 50 stars by December 25th. Okay. So each day... I'll get a star as I complete the puzzles, and then I'll get two stars because there's 25 of them. Great. Collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. Right. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. Awesome. Before you leave, the elves in accounting just need you to fix your expense report. Uh-oh. Your puzzle input. Apparently, something isn't quite adding up. Specifically, they need you to find the two entries that sum to 2020 and then multiply those two numbers together. Okay, so for example, you suppose your expense report contained the following. So we have several numbers. In this list, the two entries that sum to 2020 are 1721 and 299. Okay, and then you multiply them together produces this number. So the correct answer is this. Okay. So we get, we're going to get an input, which is going to be a sequence of numbers, random numbers. And we need to find the two numbers, two matching numbers that add up to 2020. And then we need, as soon as we found them, we multiply those two numbers and we're going to get a result. And that result is the answer to this uh, part of the puzzle. Um, of course, your expense report is much larger. Find the two entries that sum to 2020. What do you get if you multiply them together? To begin, get your puzzle input. 
So there's a bunch of numbers here. We can do this by uh, hand. It's going to take us a lot of time. We won't do that. We'll just create a program for it to solve it. So I'm going to uh, download this input and I'm going to first create a folder for the first day. All our answers are going to go into in here. And we're going to save our input in here. There we have it. Great. Let's remove the last line. And now I'm going to copy, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Let's write it from scratch. Um, OK, we're going to write, write our solution in here index.js um, let's first do some setup uh, code that is what's the I have a new keyword ah just gonna I forgot the shortcut for the comment there we go okay so we're going to need to read the file and therefore, we're going to uh, import the FS module from Node, uh, which stands for file system. And then um, let's read the file, read file uh, sync, and the first parameter is going to be, let's just go um, let's also require the path because we're going to use the path module to normalize the um, let me peek at uh, how I, I did it in the preparation I always get this wrong uh, path join okay I'm just gonna copy paste it much easier Yep, that's what I'm looking for. Because if I don't do this, if I don't join normalize the path, then if I run the uh, index.js file from a different folder, then it's going to look up the input file in the folder that I'm currently running it. Uh, and then therefore it's not gonna find it if I run it in the root folder instead of the day one folder. So this is gonna make it much easier to just uh, run the solution from uh, wherever we are at the moment in the terminal. And then we're going to say it's UDF 8 encoded. Good, let's see if, um, let's console log the file and see if we have it in here. A node, actually we're gonna cd into the day one so it's much easier. Awesome, we have all the numbers. First we're going to need to uh, actually, um, let's put the solution here part one we'll need to the file these this isn't we, we need to put each number into an array and then actually parse those numbers uh, so we can work with them so we're going to say input parsed uh, just to say input array is equal to um, mm -mm, input uh, split by new line which is going to create an array, split it by uh, a new line. So each item being, uh, oh, let's uh, console like that. There we are. Uh, it's not working as expected because uh, it needs to be backward slash, of course. Awesome. So we have an array of each number, uh, but it's their strings, as you can see, because they're encoded by double by single quotes. So we're going to uh, use map to parse each string into a number, and this is kind of like a shortcut for um, if we say input, and then let's let's like 
string and then return nah return number string so yeah th this is the same as this uh, line basically it's just a shortcut what we do with uh, this is we say okay uh, number is a function so if we just pass the function as the callback to map uh, we say okay whatever for each because um, map goes through the array and for each element pass the element as the argument to the to this function to the number function and return that result so basically what we have here we have uh, the element uh, we pass it to number and then we return the result and we can just uh, the shorthand for that is is this and yep each element is now a number good we have something to work with so back to the puzzle we need to find two entries that sum to 2020 um, I think I'm just going to brute force uh, this solution um, because I'm, I'm sure there's a clever way to find this out uh, maybe a mathematical formula or just uh, let's have a look at the numbers um, something else but what I'm going to do I'm going to use a brute force at, uh, attempt which is basically a fancy word for I'm just going to guess I'm going to let the program guess because programs are fast and efficient uh, by going through each number and um, it's going to be two loops one nested into another the first loop is going to go through each number and the second one is going to go through all the other numbers one by one and then add it to the first number so it's going to uh, start with 1619 and then uh, it's going to try this number add it to 1619 does it sum up to 2020 no okay try the next one 1441 does it sum up to 2020 no next and so on and after we've gone through all of them, all 200 of them, uh, if it doesn't find any match, it's going to use 1919 as the base number and then go through all the numbers again. It doesn't have to go to the first one uh, because we've done it already, uh, uh, but it's going to go all through them. And then one by, uh, yeah, one by one, it's going to go through all of them until it finds a, uh, a match, uh, the solution for 2020. And then we're going to stop both loops and then record those numbers so we then can multiply them later. So let's do that. Um, I think this should work. Uh, let's give this uh, variable a descriptive name. What are we talking about here? These are accounting expense report. Okay, so let's just call them expenses. Um, and we'll call the inputs, we'll call it the expense report great yeah so it's always good to give a descriptive name to a variable so you, if you're in the middle of your uh, pro solving process uh, and then you're figuring stuff out it doesn't work you're debugging uh, you don't it's it's a, a pain to have to deal with okay what well, does the variable do again oh, it, it, you don't know what it does anymore because it doesn't have a descriptive name so always good to uh, to make yourself easier down the road okay so we're going to create uh, two loops. Uh, I like to use functional programming for that instead of just uh, imperative. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, for each and then expense. And then inside it, we're going to have um, another loop on the same array. And then let's call this, we can't give it the same name. So expense, Let's give it a second expense. Yeah, and then we know what we're dealing with. Mm. <clears throat> All right. So if um, actually, I don't think I can break from a uh, from a functional loops. It's just going to go until the end. But we don't care that. Let's not optimize uh, prematurely. It's just 200 numbers. It's going to be really quick. So we're good. It's just gonna um, 
yeah, if we find the correct solution, it's not going to stop the loop. It's just going to go until it uh, went through all of the numbers. And we're fine with that. So we have the two expenses. Uh, let's, um, if expense number one plus second expense equals 2020, then we found a solution. So we need to, we need to multiply those two. And uh, then we have the answer. So I think it's just as easy as just expense number one multiplied by expense number two. I think this might just be the uh, answer to our solution. Let's uh, run and see, moment of truth. Uh, so we have a number, we do have a match, but it's recorded twice. Ah, that's probably because, um, yeah. Let, let's console log the actual numbers and see which uh, combination uh, gives us the correct result. Yeah, so that's what I thought. Uh, 895 and 1125, those two add up to 1020, uh, which is good. And then uh, because it goes through each element twice, uh, it founds the yeah, the combination of the other way around, which also added to 2020. So that's good, yeah. Um, if we would, a way to, to optimize this would be to not go through, uh, if, we found, if we already went through a combination, to not go through it again and just uh, skip that. But uh, we don't care about that now, so that's good. I think uh, we're good here, let's just, uh, Make this a little bit prettier, prettier answer part one is that and um, yeah it's going to print it twice, ah, whatever. Let's copy this and find out if this is indeed the answer. Ta -da -da. Yep, that's the right answer. Okay, that wasn't too dif difficult. <clears throat> uh, we got one gold star, closer to saving your vacation. Awesome. We have 49 stars left, continue to part two. So each day has two parts, and um, and this is the second half, part two. And after we're done with this, we've completed day one, basically, and we're going to return tomorrow for the second day. Um, so, day, uh, part two. The elves in accounting are thankful for your help. One of them even offers you a starfish coin they had left over from a past vacation. They offer you a second one if you can find three numbers in your expense report that meet the same criteria. Hmm. Using the above example again, the three, the three entries to sum up to 2020 are 979-366-675. All right. Multiplying them together produces the answer. Oh, that's a much bigger answer. In your expense report, so the same input, what is the product of the three entries that sum to 2020? Although it hasn't changed, you can still give you a positive input. Okay, so we can reuse uh, what we have here. So the reading of the input, uh, expense report and parsing the expense report. Um, so then we can actually move this up top because we're going to use it and reuse it in part two as well. We're going to have the solution of part two down here. And then um, we need to find three numbers that add to 2020. So we can just repeat what we have here and have a, another loop nested inside of the second one, which is nested inside of the first one. This is extremely inefficient, I know, but it's just two numbers and it's going to get us the uh, the answer. We can spend some time, after we find a solution, we can spend some time optimizing this. Uh, that would be fun. Um, but for now, let's just try this and see if, we, uh, if it works. So third expense in here. And then 
the sample bits. Okay, so if sec, uh, uh, first expands plus second expands plus the third expands adds up to 1020, then um, the answer to the second part is multiplying all these three expanses together. And we're going to get three, not three, three times three, we're going to get nine times, this console log is going to run nine times because there's nine different combinations of um, these three matches. Let's see if, uh, oh, we get an error. Uh, oh, typo, expense says multiple. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so not nine, but six times. Which, yeah, it's not three times three, but it's, I think, three times two, yeah. It's, we have three different expenses, and uh, we have, uh, two possible combinations for each expense. I'm not sure how, the, why it's six and not nine, nine as a top, but I think this should be a, the answer. Um. Wait, I'm actually curious which numbers those are. Let's print them out so we... Uh, um, so we know which they are. Oh, okay, here they are. So it's... Okay, now we can also see why... So it's 390, 324, 1306, 390. So these two are switched, so that makes for a second combination. And then, oh, okay, I see, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, each each number is the first and then the other twos are switched. And then the other one is the first, other twos are switched, great. Okay, so yeah, these uh, three do, in, do indeed add up to 2020, so we can verify that's correct. And this is the answer, let's submit it. Awesome, okay, uh, we finished the first two parts. Uh, we have completed day one, share this victory, return to the advent calendar. So the funny thing is, after you've solved all of them, you get like a fun little ASCII um, uh, image. If you look to the, uh, let's go to the previous editions. And then you see here's like, uh, because it's already, Past, I haven't completed them all, but you see, this is supposed to be a solar system, and then each uh, ring is like a star or like a planet. Yeah, a planet uh, orbiting a star. So, in the beginning of the event, you didn't see anything; it's just this this part basically. And then, as you go on through the event, you the ASCII image reveals itself, which is pretty fun. So now we have our first top part of the ASCII image, which is this. Might be a Christmas tree, might evolve to a Christmas tree, but that was a, one of the previous events was a Christmas tree. So I think they're gonna, uh, it's a repetitive, they repeat it again. But yeah, that's also a fun element of the challenge to see what uh, the image is going to be like. Um, yeah, so, um, oh, Lar, uh, Lars HP, thank you for following me. A bit late to the party, I am. Uh, you've, Followed me 17 minutes ago. Didn't really keep an eye on the chat. Uh, yeah, we have two viewers. Uh, introduce yourself. Let me know who you are. How you found out about the stream. Um, I'm curious to know uh, to get to know you better. And um, uh, yeah, let me know also what you think uh, uh, about the advent of code and uh, uh, if you found this particular puzzle difficult, easy. Did you? Um, did you learn something new? Or uh, do you find this code horribly um, looking and inefficient? That's, that's the only thing I see right now. It's so inefficient. Okay, let's see if we can optimize this a little bit. How much um, first time really doing Advent, co Advent of Code? So am I, so am I. So we're in this together, yeah. Um, uh, I've, I've done uh, the... Uh, 2019 a few days ago uh, the first two days just to pre uh, prepare for this uh, for this edition um, and 
I got, I got into day three and it was really hard. Um, well, I, I just couldn't solve it. Uh, so hopefully I'm going to get farther than day three to the, uh, uh, this year. But day three was was really tough. It was it had to do something about the Manhattan distance. I don't know if you're familiar with the with the concept, but it's the VG. Basically, um, it's like uh, taxi cab geometry. So if you have if you have a grid of points, so x and y margins, and there will be like this is zero one uh, coordinate because it's x zero uh, no x one so one zero y zero and then two zero uh, three zero four zero and so on and this is uh zero one zero one uh, oh, yeah zero one zero two zero three and so forth so if if you have a point in here which is one two three four 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 so x four y four then the manhattan distance is the uh x and y coordinates added uh, to each other so four plus four would be eight so the Day three puzzle was uh, finding out, finding out uh, the uh, you had like your input was two cables. So this is one cable and this is like the second cable, and the the first and it's uh, just a bunch of strings and the L stands for left, D for down, R for right, and Q for up. And the cup and the number followed by a number, and that's the amount of coordinates it would go. So you had a cable, and you had to go through. Okay, uh, each of the strings. So it'd be you had to parse the strings, and then figure out where it's left, down, right, or up, and they go by that amount of numbers. And then as you go through uh, these paths, you generate like a yeah, like a line for both cables, and you find you had to find the intersection. And, and these two cables would, cro would cross, and you would you have to find the intersection that's closest to your origin point, meaning that has the smallest Manhattan distance. And I tried to brute force this, but and I let the program run for a minute or two, and it just it, it was still running, didn't find an answer. So I that's that's an example of where brute forcing isn't really going to um, to give you the answer, and you have to be a little bit smart about that. And uh, but lately, later I found out that there's an actual uh, mathematical formula you can use for calculating Manhattan distance. So uh, I might give it another try. Um, yeah, had some trouble with my setup. I'm doing it in uh, ABAP. I don't know what ABAP is. If you don't mind explaining it a little bit, I haven't heard about it before. And transpiling that to JavaScript with own transpiler. That's interesting. So you wrote your own transpiler, and um, you wrote the solution in ABAP, and you transpiled it to JavaScript. Let me Google that a little quick. ABAP parser. I never heard about it. Open source tab delimited text parser. Oh, I see. Looks like COBOL. All right. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, feel free to share your. Uh, uh, did you already go through the um, the first day of uh, Advent of Code twenty twenty or not yet? Oh yeah, right. Let's. Uh, I'm curious to see your solution. Um, So I see you have, okay, source, you got the, all the day set up, awesome. Um, oh yeah, interesting, I can't, this is pretty much a hieroglyph for me, I can't read this uh, at all, yeah, so I think I'm in the right file, yep. Uh, but so you have a class, okay, this, I mean, I did a little bit of Java before, so this, uh, I know the concept of classes and public and final and, and those keywords. So you have the uh, HVAM class, definition and implementation. Okay, and let's go to the implementation. Okay, so you have a method for each part, great. 
Oh, the language is messed up. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's fun, but it's extra challenging if um, if you're doing a language you're not that familiar with. Or uh, have you heard about? I'm sure you have. Uh, what's it called? It's called brain brain fuck uh, programming language. Is it like? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. So it's. The, the syntax is just plus minus, uh, bigger than, less than, and uh, brackets. And the program basically looks like, looks like this. So it's really low level, it's, um, it's super hard. If you, yeah, it's, it's a huge pain. It's, um, yeah, no way, this is uh, gonna take me uh, days to uh, find a solution for the first part. Uh, so yeah, your solution is, uh, split input. So here, your uh, where do you read the input though? I think you use do you use like a helper function for that. You you put it into a table, and the input comes from importing. Ah, oh, you're importing it here. Is it? And then perhaps in your input is here. They want. Okay, they want text. Um, yeah, so you have the input in here, you have the expenses. I think this parses the expenses into a number, like we did. So you also have two nested loops. Oh, you actually have the same approach as I did. Yeah, three nested loops here, two in here. And then you have, you do save the output uh, instead of logging it, and then you. So if these two add up to 2020, uh, then I don't know what conf does, maybe another parsing or so. But you multiply those two, you condense. Yeah. It splits into strings and then adds the strings. Yeah. It's okay to add strings in ABAP. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, you can't do that in JavaScript. It's going to mess it up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a language intricacy uh, that's useful to know about. Yeah, uh, it can literally pull your hair out if you're working in a new language. You're adding strings because you used to do that in ABAP. You add strings in JavaScript, and it's you get garbage. Um, so uh, yeah, um, that pays off. To have. Okay, and so then you have uh, the two solutions in here. Well, I'm going to try and optimize this. Um, how much do we have into the stream? 40 minutes. Uh, let I'm going to give myself 20 minutes, maybe less, 15, to try and optimize this. If you have any idea, Lars, um, maybe you thought about it as well, um, how we can make this more efficient. Um, I, I personally think I'll have to resort to an imperative uh, for loop because the functional for loop doesn't allow us to break. Uh, as soon as we find a combination uh, and I think um, yeah we'll have to do that so let's just uh, comment this one out and we'll do it we'll write the other solution in here so uh, for const i no that has to be a let i uh, is smaller than oh i equals zero well I don't write these imperative loops a lot for performance first break early as you mentioned early yeah earlier yeah exactly so let's do that let's find a solution that just breaks earlier that's all it's going to be our first optimization uh expense length i plus uh, plus that's our first loop we're going to copy these this and then have our second loop in there and it's going to be j these imperative loops are so not readable at all. What, what's I, what's J? Well, I could, I could, I guess, yeah, I could rename it, yeah. Uh, rename symbol. First, expense. It's going to make it more wordy, but uh, yeah, it's easier to read. Second expense. So what we have here is, um, if first expense plus second expense 
equals 2020, then we find our solution and we're gonna have to break. Uh, we can just, I'm going to do like you did. I'm going to store our and store part one in a, in a variable. So when you find it, um, it's going to be an array. Actually, no, it's not going to be an array. Yep, answer part one is first expense multiplied by the second. Okay, and then we need to break. But then we only, mm, wait, let's print this out. So we know what we're dealing with. Console log answer part one. Let's see. Now wait. Let's just comment the second one out. Expense. Oh, of course, because it's more expenses. Um that ain't right. It doesn't. It doesn't log anything at all. Uh, what are we doing wrong? Uh, first expense, expenses length. Okay, two loops equals zero. If first expense plus second equals. If you spot the bug, let me know. I'm sure it's something obvious. Um, console log answer part one. And then we have it in here. First expense or length. No, it's smaller than, yeah. You add up, oh wait, I know, yeah, silly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that is, uh, that, that's why I hate uh, comparative loops. Because it's just, yeah, then your your I, and then you have to actually get the first expense. Is the index not? Yeah, thanks, uh, Lars. I, I'm not writing many of these at all. I, okay. Then we have the first expense, and then rename this, rename, rename symbol J, because someone decided to start to use I for the first loop and J for the second. Expense, expense, uh, J. Okay, um, but then, so here first expense, second expense, same here. And then something I spotted is that, well, well, let's let's see around first this one and see, yeah, okay. So it doesn't break after the second loop. So we're going to need to um, mm, mm, mm. we're going to do the, in the outer loop if answer part one is undefined, then. Uh, we need to continue. Otherwise, oh, if okay, other way around. If answer part one is defined, so if just equals to true, then we break us all because we mean to found a solution. Otherwise, just continue. So that's how we know from the other loop, the outer loop, that the first loop found the solution. We could also store answer part one, uh, or just like, no, I think this is good. Yeah, great. Uh, so we did optimize that. I think another thing we can do is also, this is going to start at, um, I think the, the solution or the, the puzzle explicitly states that it needs to be two different numbers, two entries, doesn't it? To find the two entries, that's two entries, exactly. So what this does is that the second loop starts with the first number as well. So we get, we add the same number to each other, the same entry to each other, which isn't it really possible. Um, so we can start J at I. Um, and then as I progresses, J is going to not go through previous combinations, but is going to continue. 
So that's going to make the inner loop every on every iteration of the outer loop shorter by one. So if the outer loop is at say 185, the inner loop is just going to go through these ones because all the previous ones we already had them. Uh, so that's what this is going to do, I think. Uh, and then I think it needs to be i uh, plus 1. Like this. Let's see if it works. It does. I think this is the most optimized solution to, uh, to this. Because let's just console log for the fun. Let's console log um, each iteration. Console log i n and j. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So as you can see, oh yeah, it's it's truncated. As you can see, thirty-seven. We go wait, thirty thirty-eight. So yeah, i is thirty-eight, j is thirty-nine, and then it it skips the the ones before. So it goes until the end, and then 39 start, and then Jace has a 40. Great, yeah, I think this is the most optimal solution we have right now. So that's good. I think, uh, wait, you know what would be fun? How much time do we have left? We're eight minutes in. Uh, it would be fun to measure this, um, to measure the efficiency. Uh, let's, uh, uh, then shortcuts. Um, let's <clears throat> console time. I'm going to use console time uh, before the loop. Uh, console time uh, perf. Uh, console time start, I think, is the function. And then let's, yeah, after the loop, console time stop. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, we remove that console. We have the answer in here. Time start is not a function. Start time. Ah, uh, always forget it. Node docs console. Um, console start time. Where is it? Oh, it's just time. Time and time end. Okay. Yeah. Time and time end. Okay, let's see how this how fast this runs. So it's 9.146 milliseconds. I'd be curious to see how fast your solution is, Lars. Um the the the, the not performance optimized approach, and then if you manage to write this. What we're basically doing here, uh, write it in ABAP and see how fast it runs in ABAP. I'm sure it's faster than uh, the JavaScript uh, if both solutions are equal. Uh, I think ABAP sounds more more efficient than, than JavaScript because it's more low level, I guess. Um, but just for curiosity, let's see how long it took to, uh, to go through the first solution. Uh, the one we wrote in the beginning, uh, time, uh, perf, unoptimized, and then console, time, and perf, unoptimized. I transpiled the ABAP to JavaScript in this case. Running on a real ABAP system is always slow. Oh, I see. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's see how the unoptimized. Wait a second. Oh, I see what's going on because, yeah, I think. Um, that's weird because when we ran it the first time, what did it say? Uh, 
yeah, I'm sure as well. I think day four or five, it's going to be some real brain crunching, yeah. But uh, I'm not sure why the... If, if we just run this one without the previous one, it says 7.4 milliseconds. And then we can like run a few times and it's going to... Yeah, it's around 7 milliseconds. But if we add the first one, so let's just... Uh, yeah, if we add the first one, it says 9.9 .9 milliseconds for the first one, but then the second one is super fast. So I think there's something going on here about reading the file. It reads the file synchronously, so that should be it. And then it parses it. And then I think maybe because it's, yeah, maybe because it's putting in memory or something that the second loop goes much faster, iterates much faster to the array for some reason, yeah. Um, but to actually be able to compare the two, I think we need to switch the places so we see how fast they run when it's already memory. So this is like 0 0.5 milliseconds. So let's just add that to here. Optimized solution. Uh, takes about 0 0.5 milliseconds and then let's put this underneath and see how long this one takes two point about two and a half yeah um, about two and a half, so let's go in here. Unoptimized solution, uh, about two and a half, yeah. I mean, because it's just two, 200 inputs, it's, it's nothing in computer time. Uh, we shaved off two milliseconds, but um, it's just fun to see how a different solution that is definitely harder to read and more verbose um, is uh, is more efficient. I never bother about if if I would be writing a production application or if I'd be writing a code that was supposed to be read by, by other developers. I I would definitely not bother with this at all because this is so much harder to read and to go through and debug than than this. That is just not worth it at all to have. Uh, those yeah for those two milliseconds because what's more important is debugging and working together with other developers it's uh, but for performance I think it might be worth sorting the array before the loop oh I see that's neat yeah yeah looking at the input it's the low numbers that will give the correct results you're right that's another uh, that's another performance thing we could do um, yeah we could do that Let's do that before we close the stream. Uh, we have about four minutes left until the hour. We are going to uh, sort the array before actually going uh, doing the optimized solution. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, I'm just going to copy this in here. Well, no, I'm just going to keep it. Uh, and then up top. We're gonna say cons sorted expenses and then go expenses sort. Is that gonna do what I want? Or do I need to give it a callback function? Let's see. I'm gonna comment this out. <clears throat> I'll comment this out as well. Great, let's run it. Uh, it is, but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah. Because this starts with a three, it it's it's not sorting correctly. Okay, Le I need to add it, a callback function to it, and it's gonna take a b return. Uh, so I think sort if the number a minus b. 
Yeah, A minus B. That's what we want. Great, yeah. Uh, so we have it sorted. And I think what we can do is we can go as follows. We can either, oh wait, I forgot to uncomment the whole thing. Yep. We can break when we find an answer, but we can also break when um, the first expense plus the second expense is bigger than 2020 because we, then we, yeah, but then we're going to find an answer before that. So, yeah, no need to do this, actually. Yeah. Um, still working. Uh, we can perfect. Uh, let's see how fast it runs. I think what, yeah, I don't think it's going to be much different from from the 0 0.5, but let's just see. Put it down here. Time end. Oh, and I actually need to. I don't know why. So we get the correct result. Oh, it is actually um, zero point. Yeah, zero point three two. I mean, it's yeah, kind of like we shaved off like fifty percent of this one. 0 0.2 milliseconds off. Yeah, that's uh, what would be more interesting though is to um, to actually log the i and j values and see how many iterations we go through before we find the uh, solution. Previously, we saw it went through quite a bunch. So um, in here, console log i j. Uh, let's make this bigger. Oh, so that's not much at all. So it goes, uh, I goes to the first one and then it doesn't find any combination with J and then the second one and third. So the combination is the fourth together with the 11th uh, entry. So I is 1861 and J's, no, it's not four. Oh, wait, by one. Okay. So, uh, fifth, 1932, is it? 11th? Mm, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh no, hmm, not sure. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's much more uh, optimized now. I think it only tries, I don't know, it tries, 200 combinations here, plus two more, plus two more, so that's 600 combinations, 800, 881, uh, 811 combinations. Yeah, I think we, we can just say here const, uh, no, let tries is zero, and then at each try, we add it up, and then we console log the tries at the end. Seven hundred ninety-seven uh, iterations. Yeah, I think that's about. Uh, there might be another optimization, but I, that's about as good as we can get. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, if you um, wait, let me. Are you going to try and write this in uh, in ABAP and uh, see how it works in uh, in your um, um, yeah in ABAP? It'll be uh, I don't think it would be that hard to write this uh, to translate this solution to ABAP. Oh, yeah, you're not optimizing. All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. And then we could do the same thing for the second part, which we're not going to do today. But it's going to be just the same thing, basically, but with uh, 
uh, another layer of a nested loop inside and then you break three times and you sort the array. I'm not sure if sorting the array would give a good, I think it would, yeah, it would definitely would because the numbers are so much bigger. Yeah, I think for the third solution, actually sorting is much more efficient because it's another number, so you're gonna end up with lower numbers, uh, therefore more in the beginning of the array. Um, but um, yeah, we found a solution. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, make this a little bit prettier. I'm gonna log it at the end. And um, answer, sorry, part one. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna comment this one out. Because just, I'm gonna keep it in here just to see, to like compare it, I think it's fun. Um, and then I'm gonna comment the second one out. And I think if I run this again, we get, yeah, we get answer part two and then answer part two six times, but that's fine. All right, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, I have a lot of other problems with the transpiler. Oh yeah, so you're not only dealing with uh, the actual problem, solving the puzzle, but uh, uh, transpiling problems as well. Yeah, that's uh, another, another level. Uh, I wouldn't be up to the task if you ask me, but uh, kudos to you for doing it in uh, BAP. I'm gonna keep an eye on uh, on your repo and see uh, how you progress to the event. Cool. Um, that's it, folks. We went through the first day. We came up with a solution uh, pretty quickly, and then we uh, for both parts, and then we spent some time optimizing the first uh, solution. Uh, we brought down the time from two and a half milliseconds to 0 0.3 which is uh, best we could do and it's not much of a difference and it's definitely not something uh, I mean it's not more readable it's harder to debug so it's not very clean but it is more optimized and uh, yeah it's just fun to see how these two compares I'm going to push the code um, to the repository so you can view it later as well I'm gonna drop a link into the chat a little in a little bit uh, let me do that first commit at um, solutions day one why is it working get add Okay, it's pushing, it's live in here, should be here. Okay, so you'll be able to find the, uh, the solution in this repository. If you're curious, I'm going to drop the link in the chat. All right, and um, yeah, I think that's it. It was fun, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'm going to be streaming day two tomorrow, same time, 10 a.m. in the morning, Central European time, uh, or whatever time it is at your place. And um, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to see what the day two is going to be about. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be able to get through it uh, alone or with your help. Do uh, drop by and say hello and uh, help me if I'm stuck. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to stay in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter. That's uh, my name is. Uh, wait, uh, oh, I'm gonna drop a link into my Twitter channel. So, but I think you can see it in the uh, in the stream. Uh, underscore maximization. Here it is. Stay in chat uh, if you uh, yeah if you have some questions or if you wanna um, um, 
uh, chit chat about uh, I don't know, of code or anything else that you're uh, working on JavaScript related I'm uh, or deployment anything like that uh, it'll be fun uh, to do so yeah uh, thanks for watching I'm gonna wrap it up now and I'll see you tomorrow 10 a.m.